It's a jungle in there. It's a jungle. More like a rainforest right there. <laughs> it is a jungle, but... safari driver for the next couple of days here throughout the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Now, this reserve, like other reserves in Africa, partners with the Disney Worldwide Conservation Fund to help conserve and protect lots of the animals that you're about to see today. Over the years though, these animals have become real accustomed to humans and it makes for an excellent safari. Now, speaking of animals, look above you. Check out that animal spotting guide. Those are all the animals we have here on the reserve. Now you can use that while we're out there to help you identify any animals that I miss or don't point out. Now today we are entering the reserve in what's known as the Little Ateri Forest. Keep your eyes peeled. The animals in this forest are notorious for their camouflage. Oh, check it out already. Look at that brown animal to your right with those white striped legs. That's called an okapi. Lots of people think that the okapi is related to the zebra because of those stripes, but actually that animal is a relative of the giraffe if you were to look Closely at its head, you see they do have pretty similar facial structures, so you can kind of make the relation. Now, okapis are such shy and elusive animals, though, that they weren't even discovered by Westerners until 1901. Pretty big antlers, while the females do not. Oh, look who's hanging out right in front of us. Looks like he's soaking up some sun. That is the rare black rhino. You guys are so lucky. This is an extremely rare animal. There is less than 5,000 black rhinos left in the world. Now we are working with groups in Africa that try to help by monitoring those black rhinos and by offering them veterinary treatment and rehabilitation, but unfortunately, they are still poached for those horns. Now those horns are made of keratin, it's the same stuff that makes up your fingernails and your hair, and lots of the locals in Africa believe that the black rhino horns hold uh, mystical healing powers. Oh man, there's a big ol' hippo in the water right over there. That's the Nile hippopotamus. A huge animal. They can get up to 5,500 pounds. Now, big size, big appetite. They can even eat up to 150 pounds of grass alone each day. Now, despite their huge size, they are actually excellent swimmers. They can even hold their breath up to eight minutes at a time. Now, look for some shadows moving below the water. Those will be the hippos. Real quick though, some of the birds on those islands, those are pink-backed pelicans. Now look closely at the nest in the middle, there is a baby pelican in there. You can see her tiny white body and her little beak. She was just born a couple of days ago, but she is growing real fast. Now the mother is starting to have some difficulty sitting on her anymore, so... I guess she's gonna start having to cooperate. We're about to go cross over a real old bridge though, so I'm gonna go nice and slow. You folks would not want to fall in here. You'll understand why. Check it out. Those are Nile crocodiles. Nile crocodiles can get up to 20 feet long. You can tell because their spots are shaped real irregular and darker in color. Now that's different from their cousin, the reticulated giraffe, who has a much more well-defined spot. You can find those over at the Animal Kingdom Lodge if you were curious. These of monkey in the world. Just look at their face and you'll see why. Now that's actually how you distinguish who the most dominant male is in a group of mandrills. You just look for the one that has the most vibrantly colored face. As we pull through here, look on either side of us, right up ahead, you can actually see that there's tusk markings in the clay itself. 
an excellent indicator of the elephants. Smell is also a pretty good indicator of the elephants too, I'd have to say, but another reason elephants like to hang out here is because they actually like to eat the clay. The clay contains minerals that they can't find in their normal diet. It's sort of like, believe it or not, elephants do have pretty sensitive skin. Now, unfortunately, elephants are also facing loss of habitat, so as their habitat shrinks and shrinks, humans and elephants are forced to share the same areas of land with one another in Africa. Now, that creates potentially dangerous situations for us both. Now, guys, look at what we've arrived at. Addicts are a desert-dwelling antelope. They can go most of their life without drinking any water at all. That doesn't mean that they don't need any, though. It's just that they get most of it from the food that they eat. And there's also some cool birds to your right. Those are yellow-billed storks. They're carnivores. They'll eat things like small birds, fish, rodents, even snakes. They're extremely opportunistic eaters, so if it crosses in front of them, and they can stuff it into their beak, those yellow-billed storks will probably at least try to eat it. Now back to those addicts, they have a pretty cool coat. It changes color depending on the season to help with thermoregulation, so. Fortunately though, as we splash down here, it seems like we're reaching the end of our two week safari, but I do hope you enjoyed seeing all those animals. It was a pleasure spending this time with you, and I do want to remind you that no matter where you live, you can help with the conservation of your local wildlife and their habitats, really just by being environmentally conscious or learning about your local conservation agencies is enough to help.